he just gave me, okay? I could see God coming down from heaven. Adam and Eve had just fallen. And uh, this is what I heard. Adam! Adam! Where are you, Adam? Adam! Eve, where are you? Adam! Adam! Where are you, Adam? Why are you hiding? Why are you running from me instead of to me? Wasn't it wonderful when we walked together in peace and harmony? Didn't your hearts leap for joy when you knew I was coming? Adam! Adam. Where are you, Adam? What happened to the joy? What happened to the excitement? What happened that you didn't show up for our walk? Adam! Adam! Where art thou, Adam? Where art thou? Now the sun came. With the same call. Mankind, mankind, where art thou? Where art thou? Assembly. The assembly, the church, the firstborn of many brethren. Where art thou? What happened to the fellowship? What happened to the joy? What happened? What happened? The sun crieth. Where art thou? The same love, the same blessings that was enjoyed, enjoyed before the fall. It's the same. Set my heart's lonely for the fellowship that I want and plan for with my precious children. Where are my children? Where's the fellowship that we enjoyed so much? Where art thou? Where art thou? Wow. I've never heard anything like that before. Wow. God loves our fellowship. Nothing's better to him than our fellowship. Nothing. Hallelujah. I am so excited about preaching this message, and I want you to know I have a lot of scriptures to give you, and you're going to like this. Again, I want to entitle this, The King and His Kingdom. That's the first part of it. The last part is The Kings in His Kingdom. And we'll explain that. I want to, first of all, uh, I kind of wrote down the best way I could. How many of you have ever seen that movie, The Prince and the Pulper? You need to see that movie if you haven't seen it. I think it was a prophetic movie. The Prince and the Pulper. The prince was a young boy, and he, he had a twin, but he didn't know it, and this twin was a pulper, okay? The prince was wealthy, spoiled, and selfish. In training, he was in training to be the next king. I want to read that again. The prince was wealthy, spoiled, and selfish in training to be the next king. The pulper, very poor, lived on the streets, homeless, he was being trained by fear and intimidation to be a thief, a liar, and a professional beggar. Then he would, whoever trained him, he would take the spoils of what he got that day and he would take it and give it to them. But he had a good heart. Sometimes when he would go out and steal, he would see somebody that had more need than him and he would give it to them. 
then he would go and take a beating. He would go and take a beating from the people that they knew that he was a good thief. They had trained him, and he was supposed to turn them over the goodies. They would beat him, but he would try to tell them, I, I, I just couldn't let this poor woman do without. She was about to die, and I gave it to her. He had a good heart versus the young prince who was selfish, a liar. Then the two, what happened is that somewhere or another, the pulper slid through uh, an open place in the fence and he went up to where the king was. Now, the king was outside, the, or not the king, I'm sorry, but the, the, the prince. The prince was outside and he was amazed at what this boy looked like. I mean, they were identical. And so he said, let's play a game. I'm gonna put your clothes on and you put my clothes on. So they put each other's clothes on, you know, and now the pulper is dressed like a prince and the prince is dressed like the pulper. And the, the, uh, their uh, people looking out over them wondered where the prince was. So they went out and looked and they mistook the prince for the pulper and the pulper for the prince. The two got mixed up. The king was made to look like a pulper, and the pulper was made to look like the prince. So they threw the pulper out on the street, who was the prince. The pulper in the king's clothes was mistakenly put on the throne as the king. So you have a king dressed in pulper's clothes now in a brand new world with the homeless, the killers, the liars, the people who didn't care. And then you have a pulper who has a good heart on the throne. The pulper in the king's clothes was mistakenly put on the throne as a king. The king's subjects and instructors began to notice a change in this new, this new prince. He wasn't acting like a wealthy, spoiled, selfish young boy anymore. The now pulper, who was a prince and was going to be the next king, sounded like a raving maniac, treated like a thief, a liar, but kept trying to tell everyone, I am a prince and I will be your next king. Long story short, I hope I've kind of stirred you up to see the movie. Long story short, the prince began to take on the heart of compassion as he saw the poverty, the sickness, the crime, etc. His new heart made him a good king because he got it, he was restored to being uh, the prince who was the next king and his daddy died while he was out on the streets so he was the next king the pulper realized he wasn't capable of being a king the reason why he was not born into the royal family that's the only way he could become a king. So, being that he was not born into the royal family, he would never get the respect of being a king. He instead became an ambassador for the, for the people representing their needs to the king. So the story turned out good, didn't it? Now right here, I just want to say, how many of you are born again? Hallelujah. You're born again in the royal family. Yes. And you'll get the respect. <laughs> I guarantee you, Satan said, Paul, I know. But who are you? Jesus, I know. But who are you? Your sons are the most high God. Now, the king and his kingdom. Uh, Pat, first of all, would you pull up Matthew 6, 
Let me see exactly where the, I think it starts in verse 9, the Lord, what they call the Lord's Prayer. Matthew 6. Hallelujah. 6 9. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father, say it with me, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. From time to time, Pat, I want you to keep pulling up when you feel just the leading of the Lord, you pull up Matthew 6.10. As I'm talking, and, and I'll be doing a lot of reading on scriptures, but okay. Give us this day and our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive our debtors. Now, isn't this something? What do you see here? Character character forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from e the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever the king and his kingdom the king and his kingdom revelation 1 and 6 Revelation 1 and 6. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. Who's he talking about there? He's made us, you. Everybody said, he's making me a king. He's made me a king. Get a hold of this. And a priest. You get that? Everybody get a hold of it. King and a priest. Now, in the Old Testament, this is why Saul got kicked out of the kingship. God intended for him to be a king for all eternity. Amen? For all eternity, he intended for him to be a king. Now, I'm serious. If you find yourself getting sleepy, bite your finger. Ask me to, I'll bite it. The reason I'm saying this, uh, let, let me show you why my heart is so set on this. I'm not just being tacky. I'm talking about your life depends on this. What, what, I don't get up here and just, just talk to be talking. I don't do that. When I was in Vietnam, uh, well, actually, in boot camp it started, you didn't dare fall asleep on guard. And I couldn't understand why in the world they were so hard on people who fell asleep. I mean, they would. They would come back behind you. They had to stick, and they'd hit you right upside the head. And there were times that we would go to bed at 1 or 2 in the morning, tired from marching and doing push-ups and set-ups and all that other stuff. And we would have to get up at 5 in the morning. So sometimes we only had three or four hours sleep. Then we'd have to go to school. So then we would go to school. And I'm telling you what, you can only know the, the nomenclature of a, of a rifle for so much. I mean, there's only so many ways you can tear it apart. One. And we would tear it apart, put it together, tear it apart, put it together, tear it apart, put it together. And it got so boring, you know, and we think, why do we have to keep doing this? Things over. But we had to learn. And boy, I would sit there and I would fight sleep. Boy, my eyes would get so sleepy. Man, and I'm thinking, why are they so hard? And I, that's where I learned, you know, one bite my finger. Well, I uh, made it through. And by the way, I, I want to say this. Because of the effort that I put forth during that, I was the second one in 80-some-odd men in our platoon. There was only one other man ahead of me that finished ahead of me because I made up my mind, I am going to do this thing. Now, you can do the same thing. Bite your finger if you have to. Now, why is that so important? Well, when you're on guard dirty, duty over in Vietnam and you're out in the middle of the jungle and you fall asleep, many times what happens is you find people dead the next morning. They would come in, slit their throat, and leave you alive. Yeah. If he was asleep, he was the one. And when he would wake up, there's his buddies, and it would bother him for the rest of his life. Listen, we're talking about eternal life now. Amen. So do this for me. Okay, now, uh, we are made kings and princes. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 5. We're talking about the king and his kingdom. Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. <coughs> Hallelujah. We're going to read verses 1 through 10. Now, say them with me, okay? 
And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll to loose the seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose the seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the, hand, out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne, now, the, now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the Prayer. prayers of the saints. Amen. Woo! Isn't that good? Amen. The prayers of the saints. Glory to God. They were so happy. What did they do? And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. What did we sing today? And have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on earth. Hallelujah. Go to Jeremiah 29.11. We, we're very familiar with this scripture here. Jeremiah 29.11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. That's talking about you. Amen. Now let's go to Matthew 25. We'll read verses 14 through 30. Hallelujah. This is talking about usins. Yeah. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, Jesus, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To each one according to his own ability. Okay? Remember that. To his, according to his own ability. No one has an advantage over you. Nobody. And immediately he went on a journey. The five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received the two gained two more also. And he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So let me, let me say this. This is what's been going on in my mind. I heard this from the Lord this morning as I was reading this, and I wrote it down that I... Uh, this is how I wrote it. God, now hear me. God has been dealing with some of you, just like he's dealing with me, but he has been dealing with some of you. I know that I should. There's some things he's wanting you to do that you're not doing. He's dealt with your heart on it time and time again, and you've said, I know that I should. Get it out. How can my talents profit the church is how you need to, add, to get the question, answer the question. How can my talents, don't hide your talent anymore. How can you help this church? When I was a youth pastor at uh, 
uh, ev uh, evangel assemblies of God. I knew that I was called to preach from the time I was eight years old. And I kept waiting for that opportunity and waiting for that opportunity to preach. And I mean, boy, someone dropped that. I, they would call us out to preach sometime, and I was so excited I could hardly stand it. And then it'd be months and months and months before the next time and all that kind of stuff. And then finally I thought, okay, the Lord spoke to me and said, if you're not a success where you are, you're not going to be a success where you're going. I thought, okay. So, boy, I started fasting and praying. Every time the church doors were open, I was there. Okay, God, here I am. I'm doing everything I can for this church. We fasted. We prayed for our youth because that was our main ministry. And, boy, there were times, I tell you, they broke my heart. Youth can just flat break your heart. We planned a party one time, a big old party. We had the greatest thing all that planned for our youth. And we were having 30 and 40 in, in, uh, in church some, many times. And the, they had won the C.A. Christ Ambassadors Award three months in a row, which I think still stands as a record, because they always were going out and getting other kids because they were so excited about what God was doing. We would have kids laying on the floor where the Lord had just slain them in the spirit, just laid them out, and they were down there praying in tongues. I don't think we had one child, uh, one kid that didn't, wasn't baptized in the Holy Ghost and praying in tongues. They've turned out to be ambassadors for Christ here on this earth. Uh, police officers, uh, chaplains in colleges, places like that. Well, what happened was is that God turned that around, but we fasted and we prayed and we believed God. And, and that's the same thing we can do here. Now, we can do it, but it isn't going to be just me. It isn't going to be just Helen. It's going to be you. What can you do? What talent can God's got you here for a reason? What talent can you do to help this church? What can we do? I mean, we've got lots of talents here, but we need to come together and get these talents in this church. Make this church a lighthouse. Johnny, what can I do? And I, I tell you what, man, it, the job needs to be done. We just get in and do it. I, I can't think of one job that I haven't done in a church to support my pastor. Can't think of one. I've cleaned toilets. I've mowed yards. And then when you do it, you do a good job on it. I asked Brother Pogue one time, I said, can the youth take over doing the front yard? Uh, we had a big yard at that church. And they said, yes, before the youth got through with that church, with that yard, it was the best it ever looked. We fertilized it. We edged it. We did everything we could for the church. And I want you to know, it looked good. And it went from about 250. And Brother Pogue, oh, let me tell you something. People were hurt. They were leaving the church. They were talking about how boring Brother Pogue was. And Helen and I, boy, we got tired of hearing that junk. And we got before God and we started fasting and we started praying and praying for our pastor. And boy, I want you to know his message changed. He started getting the fire of God under him. And that church went from 250 to 1,200. They had to build a new sanctuary. It's, it's us together. It isn't just two of us, one, two of us. It's all of us together. What talents do you have? Don't hide them. Don't hide them. Use them. Now, that's what I got from the Lord, and so that was free. Okay. Uh, okay, where was I? Okay. So... He who had received, uh, we, uh, oh yeah, yeah, this, oh, this is the good part. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. Look what he says. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Hallelujah. Just faithful in our giving, faithful in, in, with that talent, okay? Faithful over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. He also who had received two talents, and I want to say this according to his ability, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. And the Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful. Everybody say faithful. 
faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. Let me tell you right now, that's a lie. That's how he perceived this man. It wasn't true. Jesus is the one that he's talking about here, and you know Jesus, and I know Jesus. He is not a hard man, and he is not going to reap where he didn't sow. So this man, had a, he did not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, okay? Now get a hold of that. He didn't have a relationship with him. I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you had not sown and gathering where you have not scattered. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reaped where I did not sow, uh, where I have not sown. And, and, and he was perceiving that of this man because this is not the way he was. And gather where I have not scattered seed. If that were true, why did he give them the seed to sow in the first place? Amen. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten. Hallelujah. For to everyone who has more will be given, and he who will have abundance, and he will have abundance, but from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant in the outer darkness that will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, we have the talent, don't we? Amen. Amen. We have the talent. Now then, let's use it for the Lord. Praise God. Now, every person here, you're not one of the, you're, you're not like the guy that's going to dig and hide your talent. You love the Lord. And all of us are a work in progress. We are. But I'm telling you, don't ever lose sight of that. What he began in us, he's going to complete. You know what he's doing? He's training you for kingship. He wants to teach you how to rule down here and reign in life because you're going to reign over cities when we get to heaven. Amen. Amen. Now, you, got, you have a bright future ahead of you. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, uh, let's go to Romans 8, 14 through 30. Romans 8. Can you pull that up on the Amplified, Pat? Romans 8, 14 through 30. Hallelujah. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And that word sons, that sons there is weos and H-U-I-O-S, I think. And that means mature sons. And we're all growing up, aren't we? Praise God. We're growing up. For the Spirit... Uh, uh, for the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you once more into bondage to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. The spirit himself thus testifies together with our own spirit assuring us that we are the children of God. Amen? Hallelujah. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing in his inheritance with him. Only we must share his sufferings if we are to share his glory. But what of that? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time, this present life, are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us, for us, and conferred on us. For even the whole creation, all of nature, 
waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's sons to be made know. The world is waiting expectantly for us to grow up. Man, can you imagine, can you imagine a bunch of Jesuses running around? And Dylan, Jesus started at 12. Remember that. Dylan's a good boy. I, I just, I had to tell him that the other night, so last night. I went up to him, and I, how's your head? Good. Amen. God healed him of a headache Friday night. But that, I just, I had to stop him. Went in there, he was sitting in the office, and I said, I just got to tell you something. You're a good boy. And you keep on being good. Don't you dare let anybody influence you to the bad. Just had to stop him and tell him that. He's a good kid. Okay. <clears throat> but the, the world is waiting for the sons of God to grow up. Believe it or not, your families are waiting for it. They, I want you to start praying for the sick whether you feel like they're going to be healed or not. Don't, 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 don't go by feelings, whatever you do. Pray for them because the Word says so. I would say I have had more results in seeing people healed when I just strictly went by the Word and didn't feel anything. Amen. Didn't feel a thing. Just, just do it by the Word. Amen? Okay. So God is waiting for us to grow up. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting? And, you know, you, you can eat all the time. I mean, you can sell out on God's Word and not get fat, but you can grow up. Glory to God. Okay, earnestly for God's sons to be made known, waits for the revealing, the disclosing of their sonship. What's he doing? He's training you to be a king. For the creation nature was subjected to frailty, to futility, condemned to frustration. Now, because of some, in, you know what just went through my mind here real quick, I've got to share this with you. Isn't it a shame that you can't hardly go get food that hasn't been sprayed with every kind of insecticide, uh, chickens with on all kinds of steroids, steroids and they have, what mankind has done because of, because of grief. Uh, greed, because of greed, and what mankind is. Aren't you just fed up with that? But isn't it wonderful that you can sanctify your food with prayers before? Listen, you better pray over your food. If you go out to eat, you better pray over your food. You better believe that. I remember one time I, I ate something. I don't know what it was, but I knew it disagreed with me. But I had prayed over it. Boy, my stomach started giving it this. And I said, wait a minute. That food is sanctified to my body through prayer. And I prayed over it, and, and that pain left. Hallelujah. Be sure and pray over that food. That food needs praying over. Okay. Uh, and condemned to frustration, not because of some international fault on its part, but by the will of him who subjected it, your great, 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 great granddaddy, yet with the hope. That nature, creation itself, will be set free from its bondage to decay and corruption and gain an entrance into the glorious freedom of God's children. We know that the whole creation of irrational creatures has been moaning together in the pains of labor until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves too, who have uh, and enjoy the first fruits of the Holy Spirit. Say, that's me. That's me. A foretaste of the blissful things to come. I tell you, sometimes when Steve's up here just leading us in worship and praise, I get so excited I can hardly stand it. It is absolutely, I mean, when you're leading us in worship and praise and that song, especially when you get up here today and you're, and I don't know how many times he's done this, his songs line up perfect with what I'm going to preach. I appreciate a, a song leader who, who uh, is led by the Spirit of God. And man, there was just that last song. Oh, I had to get down on my knees and just, just worship him. It, it's just so real. It's blissful. 
And then you look at other people and amazing grace, how sweet sound, saved a wretch like me. Man, I can't do that. I'm telling you, it's blissful. That's, that, that's one of the words that they had to use to describe this joy that's on the inside. It's blissful. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Glory to God. I tell you what, when I can wake Helen out of her sleep, just because I got to talk to her about Jesus and knowing I should be asleep myself, I couldn't handle it. I was so excited I had to tell her about it. Okay, enough. Okay. Uh, and not only the creation, but we ourselves too have uh, enjoyed the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, a foretaste of his blissful things to come, grown inwardly as we wait for the redemption of our bodies. Yes. From sensuality and the grave, which will reveal our adoption, our manifestation as sons of God. You, you better prepare yourself because I'm going to be one good looking dude. We better get <laughs> For in this hope we were saved, but hope, the object of which is seen, is not hope. For how can we hope for what, we ha what he has already sees? But if we hope for what is still unseen by us, we wait for it with patience and composure. So too the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray to uh, what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. But the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings to deep, too deep for utterance. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what the mind of the Holy Spirit and what his intent is. Because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints to and in harmony with God's will. We are assured and know that God, being a partaker in their labor, all things will work together and are fitting into a plan for the good of those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. When we are following the leading of the Holy Spirit, when we're praying in tongues, when we're lead, uh, walking in obedience to the word of God, then we can be assured that all things will work to our good. Amen. See, we have to understand that. Cancer? No. Nope. Nope. Blindness? Nope. All things will work together. None of that stuff. God sent the Holy Spirit to teach us. Why in the world would he ever use anything like sickness or disease to teach us? Get a hold of that. Sickness, bad. Health, good. Amen. Nobody say that. Sickness, bad. Health. What did I say? Okay, sickness, bad, health, good. God, good, devil, bad. Devil, get sick. <laughs> okay. For those whom he foreknew, whom he was aware and loved beforehand, he also destined from the beginning, foreordaining them to be molded, look at this, into the image of his son. Yeah. Wow. You have a destiny. And here, here's the most important part of the destiny, and it's not walking on streets of gold. And it's not living in a mansion. The, the, the greatest thing about the destiny you're going to be, you have is being molded into his image. Set your affections on things above. It's all inclusive. Hallelujah. Oh, where did I stop? He destined from the beginning, foreordaining them to be molded into the image of his son and share inwardly his likeness. Woo! That he might become the firstborn among many brethren. Woo! 
And those whom he foreordained, he also called. And those who he called, he also justified, acquitted, and made righteous, putting them in the right standing with himself. And those whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity and condition and state or state of being. Isn't that rich? Wow. How far did I say go down? That was it? Okay. Thank you. Whew. How much time? Okay, I'm doing good. Praise God. Lots and still have a lot more scriptures. Okay. Now, to have a kingdom, and, it, and it's a wonderful kingdom, you have to have the character of God to rule in that kingdom. That, I, I've said this before, and you need to get it. The reason he could give Adam dominion over this earth was because he had the character to do it. He had the relationship to do it. The thing that kept him out of it, please hear me now, the thing why he lost your inheritance and our inheritance, he chose and she chose to believe a lie up to the point of where he took a bite of that fruit, whatever it was, until he took that bite, he had the right to say, no, I'm not going to do this. But he chose to believe a lie. That's why the Bible tells us people are destroyed for what? Yeah. Lack of knowledge. Why? Because lack of knowledge puts you in the position where you don't know what to choose. Amen. I'll never forget one time, I, quit, I just quit going to church, praise God, bunch of hypocrites. How many of you know that all of us look like hypocrites at one time or another? In our process of growing from here to here, the old man crawled off the altar, right, and acted up. All right, so all of us have done that from one time or another. What are you supposed to do when that happens? Forgive yourself immediately. Don't let that play with your mind. And I tell the Lord, I'm sorry, Father. I know you didn't impute that to me, and I'm so thankful for that. But, God, I, 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 it wasn't the best thing for me to do. It was terrible, and I'm sorry, God, I did it. And, and I can just feel him wrap his arms around me and hold me. I tell you, that, that's the reason why that people will serve God a lot more and, and a lot more willingness because they understand. Everybody say understand. understand. They understand. You're beginning to understand the love of God. And you want to serve him because you, he loves you and you love him. This isn't love that we, first, that we love him, but that he first loved us. You know, that's why so many people today, so many young people get in trouble. They're looking for love in the wrong places. Oh, God. Looking for love in the wrong places. God is love. Okay. Uh, now then, let's go into what we've seen, the king and his kingdom now, and what God's plans are. Now, let's go into the character part of it. Let's go to 1 John 4. 17. Now, we're going to be talking about kings and priests now. We see the king and his kingdom. Now, we want to see the kings in the kingdom. One of these days, you and I are going to st be standing before the Lord, and we will receive our rewards for what we have done here on the earth. Wood, hay, or stubble, which are going to be burned up, or gold, uh, silver, and precious stones. He who is faithful over a little, God will give him rulership over a lot. We're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time in heaven receiving the rewards for the works that we do down here on earth. Okay. Uh, 1 John 4, 17. Now, th this should be important to you. And, and uh, please bring your Bibles I've said this now for over a month. Please bring your Bibles. Please bring it, notepad, and write, write, write. 
because you, you will want these things. When you're really serious about these things, these things will pull you out when nothing else will. This will create a hope. Did you know hope is strong? Oh, yes. Did you know that? Sure do you have any hope? Yes. Do, you have, do you have head hope or heart hope? See, when it, when it becomes real to you, you'll fight for it. I mean, you, you, you'll enjoy it. Praise God. Okay. Uh, in this union and communion with him, love is brought to completion and attains perfection with us that we may have confidence for the day of judgment with assurance and boldness to face him because as Jesus is, as he is, so are we in this world. Question, where is Jesus? He's seated at the right hand side of God. Amen? Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. Question, did Jesus have the heart of a godly priest while he was on this earth. Absolutely. He had the heart of a king and a priest. That's what God is training you for. Get a hold of that. You have a bright future because he's made you a king and a priest. A king without a priestly heart is a tyrant. Selfish, rich, could care less about people. But a, and then a priest that doesn't have the kingly rule doesn't have the power of the king. So he made you a king with power and a priestly heart to represent him. Oh, get a hold of that. What good is a king without a priestly heart caring about people? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Now, go to Colossians 2, 7 through 10. Colossians 2, 7 through 10. Have the roots of your being firmly and deeply planted in him, fixed and founded in him, being continually built up in him, becoming increasingly more confirmed and established in faith, just as you were taught, and abounding and overflowing in it with thanksgiving. Oh, my. When this becomes a reality, you won't be able to help that. I mean, you'll just, oh, wow. And that's why it, it's good to meditate upon the Word. See to it that no one carries you off as spoil or makes you yourselves captive by his so-called philosophy and intellectualism and vain deceit, idle fancies, and plain nonsense. There's teachers going around that won't teach this. In fact, if I tried to teach it in their church, they'd kick me out. Amen. <laughs> all right, tell you what let's do. Let's all stand up for a minute. Hallelujah. Is it too warm in here? No. Okay, we're all right? Okay. Just stand up for a minute. We might start taking 15-minute breaks. Just, I know sometimes it's just so hard. But, oh, we've just got to get this. Hallelujah. There you go. Stretch them out good. Hut. Two, three, four. Ah, uh, feel good? Yep. Okay, you may be seated. Okay, men's ideas of the material rather than the spiritual world. Just crude notions following the rudimentary and elementary teachings of the universe and uh, disregarding the teachings of Christ. How true, the Messiah. Go ahead. For in him the whole fullness of deity, the Godhead. This, the, if you don't have this marked in your Bible, I want you to ask yourself why. Because you need to have this scripture marked in your Bible. You know why it's not marked? Because it's not important. I want this to become 
important to you. Now, please hear me on that. I want the things of God to become important to you. Okay, now watch. You'll see why I'm saying this. For in Christ, the whole fullness of deity, the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, in Jesus, the fullness of the Godhead dwells there. continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine, everybody say nature. nature. Okay? And you are in him, made full and having come to the fullness of life in Christ, you too are filled with the Godhead, yes. the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and reach full spiritual stature. And He is the head of all rule and authority. The devil don't have a chance against you. Don't give that guy the time of day. Don't do it. Don't blame. Listen, the devil is not our problem. Oh, my, 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 my. You wish your life would straighten out, had some rough times, and once you like, you want a better life? Amen. The devil's not your problem. No. Lack of knowledge of who you are in Christ. Lack of fellowship, relationship. Did you know that you, if, if you were in heaven right now, you could, and you have the right to walk right up to the throne of God as a son. And, and there's no reason for you to have any condemnation at all. I'm talking about the center of the universe, yes. the throne of God. And God would probably ask you to come and sit on his lap, would probably throw those arms that created the universe. Oh. That, that's how important you are to him. And he has totally cleansed you up. Who's sitting right next to God? Jesus. Jesus. Where's the Holy Spirit? In the on earth, in us, teaching us who's up there. Yes. Hallelujah. Trying to teach us what Jesus has done. Listen, we have to experience this to enjoy it. Oh, and boy, I tell you, it's joy. And Peter, again, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, I want you to get that. I want you to enjoy then you can speak it one that has authority and not as the scribes. Can you tell I'm speaking with authority and not as the scribes? I enjoy Jesus. I mean, for me to get my wife out of a sleep, of course, she'd only been asleep just for a few seconds, and she had just gone into it. But, and, and I was the one that said, Honey, we need to go to sleep. And I was so excited I could hardly stand it because he just kept talking to me. It, it's fun. It's fun. Yes, it is. And, and I love waking up to his presence. I love going to bed. He tucks me in at night. <laughs> Amen. Pastor, what were you saying to him? Oh, well, the, a lot of the things I'm teaching right now. <sighs> when he said this to me, I, and uh, boy, I mean, it, I, I, I told Helen. We'll get to it in just a minute, but Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. And I heard him on the inside of him. Your kingdom is not of this world. Amen. And I told Helen, my kingdom is not of this world. <laughs> Why? Because as he is, so am I in the world. Amen. Yes. And he just kept doing that to me. And it just gets gooder and gooder. And you know what? Don't you just love to tell people something good and make them feel good? Absolutely. That's the same way he is. Oh, and he can tell you things much gooder than I can. Yes. Gooder, gooder, gooder. <laughs> he can make you feel so good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Friday night, Debbie fixed 
the spaghetti was good. Pecan pie, it was good. Cheesecake, cherry cheesecake, good. And the salad, good. But the Lord's a million times better. Good, and it ain't fattening. He's good. Oh, God loves you so much. All you have to do is just acknowledge him in the morning. Acknowledge him when you go to bed. Yeah. Amen. Okay. And you are in him and made full of having come to fullness of life in Christ. You are to be filled with the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and reach the full spiritual stature. If your affections are set on things above, that scripture will mean everything in the world to you. And he is the head of all rule and authority of every angelic principality and power. Praise God. That is so good. Okay. Uh, now then, so are we. Turn to uh, Hebrews 3 and 1. I'm going to start bringing it to a close now. Please, everybody say, this belongs to me. Claim it. Claim it. We believe it, therefore we speak. If you don't speak it, you'll never feel it part of it. You, you, you won't enjoy it as much. You, you've got to do it God's way. God wants to, you know, the Bible says lift holy hands and praise the Lord. I don't care where you are. I don't care if you're here at the uh, at, at Life Church. Or I don't care if you're at, what's that, uh, Hillsong, wherever that is. Hillsong. Yeah, Hillsong. And boy, they have the, the wildest praise and worship and all this. I don't care where you are. You give your best in praise. If you can praise in one place better than another place, something's wrong. I don't care if a donkey's brand in a barn, and if it sounds glorious, I, <laughs> you praise God. Why? Because he's worthy. Yeah. And rem always remember this, the Judahites lead the praise and worship into battle, and that's how they, dis that's how they defeated their enemy. Put the praisers up front. Be a praiser. Amen. Get, go out of your way. Anyway, so... Man, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm growing in the Lord, and this is just so good. I'm a young man, and I'm just, man, I'm just looking for anything. I'm grabbing at things. And I thought, oh, man, I've just got to sense the presence. So I, I thought, okay, I'll never get it on the back row. So I went up to the front row of the church, and I sit there, and, boy, I'm praising and worshiping God, you know, and it's just not happening. So then there was some little old ladies over here, and I thought, they always have the glory. So I'm going to go in where these little old ladies are. And I'm right in the middle of these kids. I'm 20-something. Uh, 20 and these ladies are 80 years old. And here's this 20-year-old just, just praising and, and not, you know. And I thought, okay, I'm trying to get everybody's attention, so I'll just go way back on the back row and see what happens there. Nothing happened. Finally, I said, Lord, what do I do? And he says, raise your hands and focus on me. Yeah. Yes, Since that time, I have never had a prayer. They talk about the heavens brassed over. They talk about an old dry prayer. I don't have them. As soon as I say, Daddy, whew, I have his undivided attention. And I'm not just saying this while I'm in front of you. I can come down to this church and immediately just walk in here with, a, okay, I'm coming in to pray, with a purpose of acknowledging him. Amen? Okay. Uh, Hebrews 3 and 1. Thank you, Pat. So then, brethren, consecrated and set apart for God, who share in the heavenly calling, I want you to repeat this with me. So then, brethren, I'm consecrated and set apart for God. I share in the heavenly calling, thoughtfully and intentively consider Jesus. I consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of my confession 
of what I say as ours when we embraced the Christian faith. That's you. Hallelujah. We believed it, therefore we spoke it. I don't know where the scripture is right now, but it says, uh, don't take any thought by saying. So when a thought comes to your mind, if you say it, you've just taken the thought. Unless it's a good thought. Say it. Okay? All right. Uh, Now, uh, real quickly, let's go to, oh, yeah. Now, this is so, so, so important to get this. 1 Peter 1 and 9. 1 Peter 1 and 9. At the same time, you receive the result, outcome, consummation of your faith, the salvation of your soul. In the King James, it says, receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. You see, in your soul, you have two ways of thinking. Until you got saved, you were ruled by your flesh. And that thinking became strongholds in your mind. When you got born again, you began to start getting the spiritual thinking into your brain to where you start harnessing your emotions. If you haven't heard that tape or bought that book, you need to get that book. Harnessing the Emotions. If you take a 2,000 pound horse and you get on that horse and you start riding that horse and I'm talking from experience now and you you start riding that horse if you let him get in a full run you're in trouble because he's going to take you where no man has gone before but if you before he gets in that gallop if you'll take that rein and pull his head around if you control his head you can control that horse. A 2,000 pound horse can be laying on the ground and if you'll put your foot on his head, he can't get up because his head can't raise up. 100 times stronger than you, but if you control that head, you got him. If you harness your emotions, you control your thoughts. Control them, don't sit there and let your eyes see things you shouldn't be seeing. Don't let thoughts start tempting you. How many of you have been just just innocently just going along, all of a sudden a bad thought come to your mind? Don't meditate upon it. Start speaking the opposite. Speak out loud to the Lord. Okay. Uh, okay. The goal of your faith is the salvation of your soul. Now go to 1 Peter 2, 1. We're going to go through 1 through 10. I want you to see this and just think. Now, this is Peter. If Peter can do it, anybody here can do it. You just have to be willing. So be done with every trace of wickedness, depravity, malignity, and all deceit and insincerity, pretense, hypocrisy, and grudges, envy, jealousy, and slander, and evil speaking of every kind. Like newborn babies, you should crave, thirst for, earnestly desire the pure, unadulterated spiritual milk that by it you may be nurtured and grow into completed salvation. Now, before we read this scripture, I want to tell you right now, how many of you have ever read books that totally misrepresented Jesus? Yes. Yeah, I have too. Books that totally misrepresented Jesus. I forget the name of that book. I'm sure somebody will remind me of what that name is before I get through with this part right here. But that book was horrible. In all things, praise him. And in that book, it said if you're you're going down the road and you break a leg, praise him for it because he's got something good intended. One of the biggest ministers, and if I were to say his name, you would know it. One of the, he has one of the largest ministries in the world. And when we in Redwood Falls, Minnesota, they said, Johnny, you got to go hear this man. I said, great. 
So we got in our cars, our church loaded up, and went up there to see him. First night was wonderful. Oh, my word, I couldn't wait to get back the second night. Go back the second night, and he's up there talking about how this little child was born with all these things wrong with him. And what God was doing was that God was chipping at the parents to make diamonds out of them. So he was using this to make them better people. I got up, I just started walking out. I thought, I'm not going to listen to this stuff. Part of it might be real good, but I am not going to put up with this thing, how God is your problem, and he creates all this kind of, and he's written books galore, all that kind of stuff. I thought, nope, I ain't going to have it. The usher stopped me and said, oh, you've got to hear the rest of the story, so please come back tomorrow night. I said, okay, I'll be there tomorrow night. So I went back the next night, said the same things in different uh, examples, but teaching the same stuff. I just went home and said, I ain't going back. Here is the pure milk of the Word. Amen. Here's the pure milk. We've got to have an understanding of this so we can know when we're uh, reading a book if it's right or not right. Now, you don't have to agree with everything line upon line, precept upon precept, but man, when it comes to some of those dumb things like that, the, the whole concept... Jesus said by his, I mean, it was written about you, by his stripes she were healed. As he is, so are you in this world. So anyway, the number one, the, 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 the milk of the word is the, is the Bible, the pure word of God. Stay with it. And, and sure, read other books. Thank God for Andrew and the teachings that he has. Thank God for that. But don't let, I went back and checked him out. Don't receive it just because somebody says it. Okay. Since you have already tasted the goodness and the kindness of the Lord, come to him then uh, to that living stone which men tried and threw away, but which is chosen and precious in the sight, in God's sight. Come like living stones. Be yourselves built into a spiritual house for a holy, dedicated, consecrated priesthood to offer up those spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. For thus it, stand, it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a chosen, honored, precious, chief cornerstone, and he who believes in him, who adheres to, trusts in, and relies on him, shall never be disappointed or put to shame. To you then who believe, who adhere to, trust in, and rely on him, is the preciousness. But for those who disbelieve, it is true, the very stone which the builders rejected has become the main corner stone and a stone that will cause stumbling, and a rock that will give men offense. They stumble because they disobey and disbelieve God's word, as those who reject him were destined, appointed to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. Let me tell you, you in your spirit, you have the heart of the priest. And in your spirit, you have the heart of a king. Amen. Old Testament, they couldn't do that. You could either be a king or a priest, but you couldn't be both. Now then, both parts fill your heart so you can rule with righteousness in the kingdom of heaven. I want you to get that. Your soul has to be changed. My soul has to be changed, and it's being changed into the heart of a priest so he can trust me with the authority of a king. Okay? I don't know of anybody here who has perfected the soul yet. So we have some work to do, don't we? And we are co-laborers with Christ, with the Holy Ghost.
Okay, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own person, special people, that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues, hallelujah, and the perfection of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people at all, but now you are God's people. Once you were uh, unpitied, but now you are pitied and have received mercy. Glory to God. And grace. It's over. We could go on and on and on in that area there. Okay. Now, uh, let's go to James 1, starting with verse 12. James 1, starting with verse 12. Yeah. Blessed, happy to be envied, is the man who is patient under trial and stands up under temptation. For when he has stood the test and been approved, he will receive the victor's crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted from God. For God is incapable of being tempted by what is evil and he himself tempts no one. But every person is tempted when he is drawn away, enticed, and baited by his own evil desires, lusts, and passion. There are good lusts and there are bad lusts. I lust after the things of God. Lust simply means a strong, strong desire. And I will not allow my body to take control of me with lust but I lust after the Spirit. Amen? Okay. Then the, evil, uh, then the evil desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully matured, brings forth death. Do not be misled, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift, free, large, full gift, is from above. It comes down from the Father of all that gives light in the shining of whom there can be no variation rising or setting or shadow cast by his turning as in an eclipse. God doesn't change. Amen. He is the same. Never compromises. And it was of his own free will that he gave us birth. Hallelujah. God planned us. Yes. Glory to God. We were planned. I think that's wonderful. As sons, but uh, by his word of truth. So that, here, uh, everybody get this. So he's talking to me. So that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. A sample of what he created to be consecrated to himself. Wow, boy, that's powerful. Understand this, my beloved brethren. Let every man be quick to hear, a ready listener, slow to speak, slow to take offense, and to get angry. For man's anger does not promote the righteousness of God, God wishes and requires. So get rid of all uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness and in a humble, gentle, modest spirit receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your hearts contain the power to save your soul. Change begins on the outside, inside, not the outside. The soul has to be changed. Now, I feel like I need to share this with you. You concentrate on the fruit of the Spirit. I don't want you to try to quit this. I don't want you to try to quit that. Don't try to quit anything like that. I want you to concentrate on love. Please, I don't know how many hundreds of times I've said this. I want you to concentrate on love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, kindness, meekness, temperance, and faith, the fruit of the Spirit. Now, this is, brothers and sisters, this is where the rubber meets the road. Don't try to quit this. 
your actions that please God, I guarantee you, will start coming out of you when you concentrate on who you are in Christ. It'll do it. It'll change you. You just speak the word and let God do the changing. You don't have to try to change yourself. Let the Lord change you. He changes you through the creative power of love and the Word. When you understand the Word, you can't read a chapter a day to keep the booger man away. You read, this is God's love letter, and particularly, please, as much as you can, stay in the New Testament and see who you are in Christ. Okay, I've just got a few more verses to read, and then I'll stop. But be doers. What does that word doer mean? A performing poet. God had me look that word up one time. And, and I said, well, Lord, a doer, you just do what the Word says. He said, look it up. So I looked it up. Be a performing poet. A poet gets it in his heart, and he writes it down, and he speaks it. Be a performing poet of the Word of God, not a hearer only. Okay. Be a doers of the Word, obey the message, and not merely listeners to it. Betraying yourselves into deception. By, and then and people who get mad at God, this is the area they fall into. It's all God's fault. That's deception. God didn't cause that. By reasoning and contrary to the truth. For if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it and being a doer of it, he is like, and again, speaking the word, uh, being a doer of it, speaking the word. And he is like a man who looks carefully at his own natural face in a mirror for he thoughtfully observes himself and then goes off and promptly forgets what he was like. But he who looks carefully into the faultless law, the law and liberty, and is faithful to it and, and perseveres in looking into it, being not a heedless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys, he shall be blessed in his doings, his life of obedience. Wow. God has a plan for you. If anyone thinks himself to be religious, piously observant of the external duties of his faith, and does not bridle his tongue, but deludes his own heart, this person's religious service is worthless, futile, and barren. That's scripture. Eternal religious worship, religion, as it is expressed in the outward acts, that is pure and unblemished in the sight of God the Father is this, to visit and help and care for the orphans and widows in their afflictions and need, and to keep oneself unspotted and uncontaminated from the world. Amen. Amen. Oh, God has, what I tried to do in this real quickly is I have tried my best to show you the king and his kingdom. And where is the kingdom now? Where is it? Anybody know? The kingdom is within you. The king has to sit on the throne of your heart for the kingdom to manifest its benefits. How many of you would like to live to where you would never have any more money problems? Where you would get victory over every sickness and every disease? It's yours for the taking. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. Who's the number one person you need to work on? Me. You. Yeah, don't try to change somebody else. Work on yourself. Look inward and build that man up. Let's stand. Hello, this is Pastor Orr, and I wanted to talk to you to just very briefly here about something that's just so, so, so important. Number one is being born again. You know, there's a lot of people who are born again who doubt their salvation all the time. 
And then there are people who are not born again who believe they are born again. How can we be sure about this? Because Jesus said you must be born again. When Jesus was in the wilderness, Satan came to him and tried to tempt him. And If thou be the Son of God. Well, Jesus knew for sure who he was. But he said, it is written. All three times when Satan came to him, Jesus defeated him by saying, it is written. You have to know for sure. And you have the Word of God that, ex that will establish you in your salvation. And salvation is two parts, actually. It's, it's being born again to where you become an heir of Christ, a joint heir. But you know your sins are forgiven, praise God, and you have eternal life. Well, you're not going to have eternal life. You will have eternal life inside of you. It begins now. And then the second part is you have a covenant with God. A wonderful covenant. The Bible says people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, not lack of sincerity, lack of knowledge or incorrect knowledge. You have to know what Jesus has prepared for you, that you are complete in Him and you can have victory and you can reign in life by one Jesus Christ. You can know for sure that you're born again hallelujah and you base that upon the word of god i'd like to pray with you now so that you can know for sure and then you can say anytime that doubt comes to your mind you can say it is written please pray this after me dear god in heaven i come to you in the name of the lord jesus christ i believe with all my heart that Jesus is your son and I receive him now as my Lord and my Savior I call heaven and earth the record this day that I declare that Jesus is the Son of God I receive him as my Savior and I have eternal life now you can know for sure that it is written and you have done what God has said and he said also I put before you life and death blessings and curses choose life that you may live find you a good word church one that's positive and whatever you do study the word because in it is the covenant of your heavenly father in heaven and all provisions is already made for you in Jesus Christ Remember, walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you. We love you.